The SNES is one of the best gaming consoles of all times, and the Atari Jaguar, while underrated, hit the market with a huge dud. I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games, and today I put the Super Nintendo up against the Atari Jaguar to figure out which one had the best games in the games they share. Second Opinion Games on the SNES, we have Tommy Moe's Winter Extreme Skiing and Snowboarding, sponsored by, well, some type of French skiing village. This was a fairly impressive game for the Super Nintendo to even pull off, even with all of its Mode 7 trickery and seeing all the hills that are thrown at you. You could ski, you could snowboard, you could go down this big hill, even if most of the time it looks like you're going sideways. The tricks are all done automatically here, so there's no real skill involved and you do move excessively fast, maybe even a little bit too fast. There's some downhill events where you try and take gold, or maybe you like the slalom where you weave your way in between the flags to eventually get to the finish line, only to find out that you're really bad at this game, because the controls are kind of awful here. Now, you do actually go around corners and you can push left and right or you could use the L and R buttons on the controllers so then you could not even touch the d-pad whatsoever when you're playing this game but it still controls really bad. You see, when you hit a corner, the game sort of corners for you some of the time. And other parts, it doesn't corner at all. So you never know when the game is going to turn for you and when it's not, making it really hard to judge and leads you off course quite often. I gotta say, even though this game is mostly completely white and colorless, at least your character wears some rather extreme snowboarding costume. And that's kind of cool. Let's take a look at the Atari Jaguar version now. Now they seem to drop the name Tommy Mo from this game entirely, probably because it wasn't worth the money to pay him for the endorsement because no one knew who the heck he was anyway. Also, take a look at the backgrounds here. They look very much like the Alps, using a real picture. Also, in between levels, you'll see some scaling effects going on. This is kind of pointless, but I do really like it. And my favorite part about this game, other than the fact that it runs a heck of a lot better, the control issues, of course, are still there. Sometimes the mountain turns and you turn with it and sometimes it doesn't, but the real selling point of this game is the menus. That's right, the Super Nintendo had a really cumbersome menu system where you had to go into the options to select what events you want to participate in. When on the Jaguar, it's just right up in your face and allows you to access pretty much the whole game right from the very start. Now you do unlock more of the mountain as you play through the game, and that's where the real meat and potatoes of this is. But every single level looks almost exactly the same with a few little differences so you're probably never going to learn this huge mountain up and down. However, it does run a lot smoother on the Jaguar, but that is to be expected with the much improved hardware. Moving on on the Super Nintendo to Pitfall the Mine Adventures. This is a game that really struggles with its own greatness. Being part of the long-running Pitfall series, they had some big shoes to fill, and boy did they try to fill them. You know, the frames of animation of your main character is probably one of the lead selling points of this game. It's beautifully well done, and your character is extremely animated. Also, the special effects are really cool, with a nice whipping sound every time you kill an enemy, especially slapping down some evil monkeys trying to kill you, because everyone knows, monkeys gotta die. Now, the music is also fairly good. The graphics in the background are completely beautiful, but the level design really suffers from what the heck were they trying to do. The levels all weave in and out and back and forth, and when you hit a checkpoint, they actually have to show you which direction you're supposed to go, because otherwise you'll forget and be completely lost. If you manage to beat the first level of this game and get the heck out of the jungle, you'll go into a minecart stage where everything is a bit darker, but because the super Super Nintendo is so bright and vibrant with its colors, you can still see just fine and figure out how to play the game. 
The controls here are kind of floaty, and my biggest problem with the game, other than the massively floaty controls and never knowing which way to go, is the fact that your life bar is done by a crocodile trying to eat your main character up in the right hand corner of the screen. Why couldn't we just have a normal health bar here? This is very confusing, and I never know when I'm about to die. This is a fairly good version of the game, and one I could strongly recommend. On the Atari Jaguar, you'll see the game is a little bit darker. The controls are still really floaty, but given the fact that the Atari Jaguar's controller isn't as well made as a Super Nintendo one, you'll find yourself missing jumps even more often. Also, the frames of animation of your main character aren't nearly there as much as they were on the Super Nintendo, and this really hurts this game. Not as much, though, as the missing sound effects. You're now missing that excellent whipping noise with your attack that you previously had and that really takes you out of the game but one thing the game does have is the fact that now when you make it to a boss battle it actually has a percentage meter at the bottom letting you know how close you are to beating the enemy because you know you can't figure out when you're gonna die at least now you know when the beast you're fighting off against is the game itself is still pretty well made but it's really not a big system seller. I gotta give the plus to Nintendo because they really crafted something special. However, on the Atari Jaguar, it just comes across as a really lazy port. The fast action puzzle game Zoop on the SNES was the one that was crammed down everyone's throats. This game is commonly found in bargain bins the world around. You play as a little triangle trying to shoot different colors and shapes and then blast them with whatever color your triangle is. It's a little hard to explain but it's easy to pick up and play and it's really hard to put down at least after an hour and then you'll put it down forever and probably pick it up like five or six years later. Now, now, on the Super Nintendo, the music here is really a strong selling point. Also, the fact that the Super Nintendo's hardware has very bright colors that it could use from its color palette at any point in time makes all of the different things stand out in their own right. There's also plenty of special weapons here, and the AI seems to be rather smart, giving you some time to react when you get close to absolute defeat, so you could bring it back from the edge of darkness at any time. Over to the Atari Jaguar, we have a slightly darker color palette, which makes the game harder to play, because if you can't tell if something's blue or purple, well, then you just have to look at the shape. This game was on the original Game Boy, and it wasn't that hard to play there, so I really can't knock it too hard for being slightly off on the colors. But where I can knock it a little bit harder was the fact that the AI just throws these things everywhere on the Dari Jaguar. On the Super Nintendo, it gave you that time to think. On the Jaguar, it will just kill you dead with one column that completely stacks up faster than all the others, leaving you to a game over much quicker. But maybe that's what you want to be done with this game a lot quicker. However, the Atari Jaguar does save your high score in the internal memory of the card. The Super Nintendo doesn't do that at all. So if you want to save your high scores, then go with the Jaguar. If you want to just play the game and see how far you can get, I guarantee you'll make it much farther on the Super Nintendo with its smart AI keeping you on the edge of your seats at all times. Both versions of this game though are good. NBA Jam Tournament Edition for the Super Nintendo was the best basketball game for the console. It's a more extreme version of basketball where you just play as two on two, trying to pull off massive dunks, steal the ball, and completely wreck your opponents. This is an excellent party game with an over-the-top announcer that sounds crystal clear. The backgrounds though are a little foggy, but we probably shouldn't pay too much attention to that instead of the characters and their likenesses, which are done really cool by sort of plastering the faces on top of generic bodies of different sizes. The proportions here don't seem too right, but there is tons of different cheats in this game, and there's lots of secrets, but that's probably for another video altogether. The Super Nintendo version is terrific in all accounts. However, the Atari Jaguar version is a lot better. The backgrounds now look photorealistic with a little bit of parallax scrolling in there for good measure. Your characters 
move in and out of the background foreground and get bigger and scale proportionally, unlike as much as the Super Nintendo did. And Dennis Rodman's hair changes after every single period of gameplay. That is pretty hilarious and somewhat accurate. Also, the game itself is a little bit easier, allowing you to steal the balls when you actually want to and then become on fire and set the net ablaze, making your opponents wish you never existed. Both games, again, are completely terrific, but believe it or not, the Atari Jaguar version is the superior one. And I'll give you a minute for that to sink in before we move on. Raiden was quite a popular arcade shoot 'em up, and on the Super Nintendo, it stayed pretty true to its roots. You get to see the whole screen up in front of you, blowing apart everything. If you don't have a turbo controller, that's okay because you can turn on the turbo options, allowing you to take down your foes really fast. Also, the heat seeking missiles here are really overpowered. The Vulcan spread shot is insane as it takes out everything on the screen. Matter of fact, even boss battles go down really quick. You have a bomb that can save your life if you use it in the pinch, and you could also pick lasers instead and then blow up everything even faster. This is a really powerful game that moves kinda chunky back and forth. The frame rate might be a little bit off, but that's okay because the gameplay is fast and fun. My bigger problem with the game is that it only gives you like five lives before it's completely game over meaning you'll probably never see the end of this game unless you're awesome at these style shooters. Moving to the Atari Jaguar, we get a massive HUD covering up like one third of the screen. This is super annoying. Also, I think I'm gonna get carpal tunnel syndrome from tapping the fire button so much because the auto fire isn't there at all. However, the graphics are a bit prettier and it doesn't have the Super Nintendo slowdown and it has a very smooth frame rate. Also, because you could set a ton of continues, then you'll actually be able to finish this game probably the very first time you play it. So this is a bit of a mixed bag. Do you want longevity continuously coming back trying to overcome a challenge or do you just want a quick arcade shooter that you could put in and beat at a moment's notice and then show for a few years before you pull it back down for that event all over again? It's kind of up to you which one you think is better. Let me know in the comment box down below. Cannon Fodder is a very interesting game where you play as little tiny army men trying to defeat your enemy in almost what feels like a sporting arena. Heck, they even have a score in between levels showing you how many of your people you killed versus how many them killed you. And there's also Boot Hill there where it just shows how these people are just cannon fodder. It's sort of an anti-war war video game showing you how fun war can be and at the same time how there's no winners in war. This is somewhat heavy handed and it will really start to prey on your mind over time. But when you jump into this game, it's still a lot of fun. I like using the Super Nintendo mouse, but mine sort of quit on me. So this is the first time I ever tried it with a standard controller. This was a power release only, probably because of all of the blood and gore for these little tiny men. Sometimes you'll just wound one of the enemies and he'll just sit there on the ground screaming in agony until you eventually put him out of his misery. Also, you could just waste people and continue to waste people as they fly all over the place. Be careful though when you're spraying bullets around because you could always shoot some ammo crates of grenades and cause massive explosions. And sometimes these explosions can kill your own little army men. If you manage to get to the end of the level and keep your army men alive, they will get promoted, but chances are they're just going to die the very next level. This is really fun to play on the Super Nintendo. And the on the Atari Jaguar, it's pretty much the exact same game. The graphics are almost exactly the same, but the one little difference I noticed in playing is that you don't have a Super Nintendo mouse. 
or the fact that when you blow up the buildings, they're more unpredictable in the way that they blow up, meaning that you never know how they're going to explode to kill your other people, so you have to really keep your distance. So this is a very fast and extremely difficult game on both consoles, but either one, you cannot go wrong. Unless you live in America and then can't play the PAL version of the Super Nintendo game. So you're probably stuck playing the Atari Jaguar one. Well, anyway, they're both good. Now let's get to the big boys. Doom for the Super Nintendo. A very controversial title, but I can't for the life of me think why. Because it's so dark you could barely see what you're shooting at. Also, aren't these like hell demons? Isn't it okay to kill them? If not them, then who, for the love of God? Now, you move around really awkwardly at like 15 frames per second, and doing anything, just moving in a straight line, is somewhat difficult to do in this game. Nothing feels satisfying at all. At least there is some music in the background, and this is a somewhat playable version of Doom. I feel bad for whoever sunk enough time into this game to beat it for the Super Nintendo, because you must have had zero luck life at all to even spend your time on this game. It's just bad on all accounts. Moving on to the Atari Jaguar version, where the frame rate is really smooth. You don't have music in the background, but you know what? That's okay, because I'd rather play my own music anyway. In between levels, there's a little bit of some, but who really cares? You just want to get back into the action, picking up shotguns and mowing people down. Now, one thing the Super Nintendo version had is the fact that you could actually circle scrape because the left and right buttons allowed you to move around and scrape around your opponents. On the Atari Jaguar, even with the six-button controller that actually has shoulder buttons, you can't do that at all. You have to hold down one of the face buttons in order to scrape, which makes cornering a little tricky. But overall, this game is great. That's right, the Atari Jaguar did something right when they made Doom, but it wasn't nearly as right as when they made our next game. Wolfenstein 3D for the Super Nintendo is a heck of a lot more playable than Doom was. You have all the weapons at your disposal, picking up Gatlin guns and mowing down these bad guys from Germany. Wait a second, they're not German? They're freaking speaking English! This is horrible! You're shooting regular people, presumably other Americans, meaning that these bad guys might not be that bad. I mean, compared to the other bad guys that you should be fighting, again, Super Nintendo, what were you guys thinking here? You had some clear enemies that everyone hates, and you decide to censor them out and put in, like, American English-speaking people? What's up with that? That's awful! The frame rate is a little bit better than Doom, and the gameplay is better. You can still circle scrape and all that other stuff. Mowing down these people is... Uh, awkward for me now because I kind of start to feel bad after a while. Uh, yeah. Let's check out the Jaguar version. Luckily, our main bad guys are back in full force, and now killing them feels extremely satisfying, especially when you pull out a flamethrower or a bazooka to take them down. They're all speaking German. You know how many people are in the room when you walk into it because you could hear them clearly, and there's also dogs that you can mow down because they're evil German dogs, not like American ones. Not that the other game even had any dogs altogether. There are plenty of levels that come at you fast. You could also see save rather than writing down different passwords, and there are plenty of cheat modes galore in this game. That's right, Wolfenstein 3D is definitely a system seller, and it shows how much better the Jaguar was over the Super Nintendo, at least in the games they share. But of course, that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. Coming for you. Ah! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I had a great time making it. Anytime I get to play Wolfenstein 3D for the Atari Jaguar, that is a good day. Now I'm not saying the Super Nintendo is crap. This is just the games that they share, and most of the games that they share are kind of bad for the most part. Now the Super Nintendo wasn't really known for handling 3D super well, and the Atari Jaguar was sort of made for that. Also notice with the games that are mostly in 2D, the Super Nintendo has a very distinct advantage. So if you want a part two in this series where I put the Super Nintendo up against the Jaguar, let me know in the comment box down below. And also the games that I thought could have went to either way, I want to know which one you guys thought were better. So until later, I will see you again, guys.